Hey guys, this presentation is on Bank 4Z, Patient Assessment and Management. So a 32-year-old woman has noted that the left side of her face is droopy and she is unable to close her left eye completely. She has signs of left lower facial nerve weakness. How would we assess and manage her? So my provisional diagnosis for this lady is that she has Bank 4Z. The fact that she has left lower facial nerve weakness makes me assume that her left forehead is also paralyzed so her frontalis is not spared and this only happens with lower facial nerve palsies. However, if his frontalis was not working, my provisional diagnosis would be a stroke. So for this patient, um, strokes, ischemic or hemorrhagic, causes an upper facial nerve weakness um, which spares the forehead because the contralateral uh, facial nerve also supplies the forehead. My other differentials include a tumour, such as a fistic neuroma, meningioma, or glioblastoma multiforme, which has invaded the entity facial nerve, infectious processes, such as Ramsay Hunt syndrome, which is Becker's zoster oticus, which is basically shingles that localise um, towards the ear as the external auditory canal, as well as the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, um, Lyme disease, and meningitis. Trauma, intracranial hemorrhage, but again, this would also result in upper facial nerve weaknesses, metabolic, such as hypoglycemia or hyponatremia, which may mimic stroke, but again, that also causes an upper facial nerve weakness, and um, iatrogenic facial nerve injury following surgery is a very good possibility, especially if she's recently had a um, thoracicectomy or some kind of robotic surgery or potentially she has a tumour in her forehead. In terms of history, um, the most important is to exclude the, that she may have a stroke. So you want to ask for other neurological deficits, particularly in the leg, arm, any weakness or sensory loss. Um, what she, was she doing during the time um, symptoms came on? Was she stressed? Did she go to the toilet and have Alzheimer's, which pointed more towards potentially maybe ruptured Foucault Foucault node, um, node of hemorrhagic um, strokes and ask for any risk factors for stroke if she has atrial fibrillation, diabetes mellitus, type 1 um, or type 2, she's had previous strokes, myocardial infarcts, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, however she's only 32 so I suspect she probably does not. Um, I also want to exclude raised intracranial pressure which may suggest an underlying intracranial tumour or intracranial haemorrhage, or does she have nausea and vomiting when she wakes up in the morning, um, decreased consciousness or alertness, or really want to exclude meningitis, so does she have any fever, nuclear rigidity, any photophobia, um, and does she have any recent facial or parotid surgery. So examination, I would do check her vitals just to make sure she doesn't have bradycardia and hypertension which may be an indication of quitting triad that it's those raised intracranial pressures and neurological exams, cranial nerve, upper limb and lower limb as well as gait. Um, for Bell's palsy what I'm expecting is a sudden onset unilateral paralysis of the facial muscles with no sparing of the frontalis so I would ask her to raise her eyebrows and if she had Bell's palsy I'd expect her not being able to raise her eyebrows. I would then grade the degree of facial nerve dysfunction using the house Bachman's grading system. Um, if she's not able, if, she, if her frontalis works, I'm thinking more of that potentially she may have had a stroke. I'd also do a skin exam to look for any petechiae um, that may suggest a meningococcal, meningococcal meningitis, Ramsay Hunt syndrome, the puncture of the external auditory canal, or any um, vesicles. Do um, slit lamp to look for any ulcers in the, in the cornea and also a cardiovascular exam just to look for any murmurs or irregularities in rhythm um, so especially if she has atrial fibrillation she has increased risk for stroke. So this is why the Bell's palsy doesn't spare the frontalis muscles. If you damage your facial nerve um, which is a lower motor neuron it basically you're losing the muscle function towards the frontalis. However, if you have a stroke, it's a supranuclear one. Um, each facial, each frontalis is supplied by both the left and right one, um, and so you get sparing of your frontalis with a stroke. So this is the House Brackman 
um, facial mood rating system. It's really from one being normal up to six, which is total quality. Um, we look at gross at rest and look at forehead, eye, and mouth. So grade two is mild dysfunction with slight weakness. There is full on face inspection. Um, grade three is obvious weakness but not disfiguring. Grade four is obvious weakness, disfiguring, as well as asymmetry. Um, grade five is severe, and uh, you can only see a little bit of um, muscle movement. And grade six is no movement at all, complete paralysis, complete optic burn. So in terms of investigations, if you're pretty clear that this is Bell's palsy, the patient had a previous Bell's palsy, and this is identical, I would do no investigations. Uh, but if this patient is the first presentation and I am concerned for any kind of stroke, I, my threshold for investigation is much lower and I would do bedside investigations such as blood sugar levels and an ECG, blood such as EECs for any adrenal dysfunction, for blood counts for anemia and other platelets, and imaging I would do a long-term brain CT to look for hemorrhagic or ischemic stroke and if it is an ischemic stroke later on order a mammogram brain to look for the location of DWI um, preference potentially which may indi which indicates the location of the stroke. So management for Bell's palsy can be divided into non-pharmacological and pharmacological. So non-pharmacological the most important thing with Bell's palsy is the eye. Um, because they're not able to close their eye or when they sleep their eye remains open um, and this is the risk of cornea separation. So it's important to tell them to lubricate and, point and protect the cornea um, by putting in lubrication drops and using sticky tape to actually stick their eye down when they sleep, as well as to counseling the patient that they have a risk of recurrence for Bell's palsy around 7% in the next 10 years. In terms of pharmacological treatments, you can give corticosteroids um, like prednisolone be to begin within 72 hours of onset, um, as well as a Botox, Botox injection to treat the facial spasm and the cornea inflammation. Um, do not give antivirals. Recent studies have shown that this has no benefit for Bell's palsy. So that's the end of my presentation for patient assessment and management of Bell's palsy. I hope that was useful. Please leave any feedback. Um, I hope this was useful for your future care of your patients. Thank you very much.